The professor told me that my characters were middle class. They drove cars. They were not starving. Therefore, they were not the real Africa. He was an American who felt he could decide what the real Africa was. Chima Mondangozi Adiche, a renowned Nigerian author and public intellectual, has spoken extensively about the negative stereotypes of Africa and the importance of challenging these misconceptions. Here are some key points reflecting our views on this issue. I came to the U.S. to flee the study of medicine. And shortly after, <laughs> and sh and shortly after I arrived, I realized that for many Americans, an African immigrant was a person who was fleeing catastrophe, war, or extreme poverty, someone who grew up with nothing or whose village had been burned down. I was baffled by how often Americans expected me to be able to talk about my experience with poverty, because they automatically assumed that to be African was to be poor. The story of catastrophe and poverty in Africa is very important, and it should be told. But it is not my story, and it is not the only story of Africa. Shortly after my first novel was published, an American professor told me that my novel was not authentically African. Now, I was perfectly willing to accept that there were a number of things wrong with the novel. But I had not quite imagined that it had failed at achieving something called African authenticity. In fact, I did not know what African authenticity was. The professor told me that my characters were middle class. They drove cars. They were not starving. Therefore, they were not the real Africa. He was an American who felt he could decide what the real Africa was. Because my book did not fit into his single story of Africa, he had decided that it was inauthentic. I wondered what he would say if somebody told him that the story of his life in a middle-class American suburb was not the real America because it was not about food deserts in the inner city or malnourished children in Appalachia. We must seek the higher ground of equalizing the value of all stories, of not relegating the stories of any group to the, sh to the shelf of niche or the shelf of special interest. There is a particular sense of validation and joy and pleasure that comes from reading stories that are about our own particular experiences, and nobody should ever be denied that. But it is as important that we read stories that are not about our own particular experiences. A student once asked me, will you always write about Nigeria or will you write about more normal things? And what struck me was that he had a sense of what was normal and Nigeria was not part of this normal. This student was not evil. He meant well, but we can mean well and be wrong. Economic superiority is a fact of our existence, but it can also sometimes give birth to a certain kind of casual moral superiority. Some parts of the world have such cultural and economic power that they end up defining normal for everyone else. It is time to widen our ideas of what is normal. In my language, Ibo, the word for love is ifunanya, and its literal translation is to see. It is important to see those about whom we speak. It is important to remember that human beings all share a desire to be valued, a desire to matter. We want our bodies to be nourished. We also want our hearts to be nourished. We will be unable to understand people if we speak of them only in terms of their need. We must speak of their need because that's important, but also we must speak of what they love, what they resent what wounds their pride, what they aspire to, what makes them laugh. We should read human stories to remind ourselves that we are not alone, to remind ourselves that we, in the wonderful words of the poet Pablo Neruda, belong to this great mass of humanity, not to the few, but to the many. And especially today that is politically fraught, we must seek the higher ground of multiple stories as a rebuke to despair. We cannot afford despair. We cannot afford hopelessness. We cannot afford cynicism. We cannot afford the defeat of our human spirit. We cannot lose sight of the enduring importance of compassion 
and kindness. Thank you. At the Chase TED Talk, the danger of a single story highlights how simplistic and monolithic narratives about Africa can be harmful. She explained that when only one story about a place is told repeatedly, it shapes perceptions and becomes the definitive narrative. For Africa, this often means story of poverty, conflict and disease, overshadowing the continent diversity and complexity. Adiche advocates for the need to present a variety of stories about Africa. She emphasizes that Africa is not a monolith but a continent with a rich tapestry of cultures, histories and experiences. By sharing diverse narratives, the true complexity and richness of African societies can be appreciated. Adiche has stressed the importance of representation in the literature and media. She believes that African writers and creators need to tell their own stories, thus providing authentic perspectives that can try the dominant negative stereotypes. Our own novels, such as Half of Yellow Sun and Americana, explore different aspects of Nigerian life and history, contributing to a more nuanced understanding of the continent. Adiche criticized the Western media's focus on negative stories about Africa. She points out that the selective coverage perpetuates stereotypes and fails to recognize the positive development and everyday reality of African people. She calls for a more balanced portrayal that includes stories of innovations, resilience, and success. Adiche believes in the power of education to change perceptions by educating people about the realities of Africa and encouraging critical thinking. It is possible to dismantle the stereotypes that have been ingrained over time. She often engages in public speaking and writing to educate and inspire a more accurate understanding of Africa. Adiche urges individuals, especially those in position of influence, to take personal responsibility for the narratives they consume and propagate. She encourages people to seek out multiple perspectives and question the validity of single stories that paint an incomplete picture of Africa. Chimamanda Ngozi Adiche's view on the negative stereotypes of Africa center on the need for diverse, authentic narratives that reflect the continent's complexity. She advocates for greater representation of African voices in literature and media, a more balanced portrayal by the Western media, and the empowerment of individuals through education. By challenging the single story, Adiche aims to foster a more accurate and respectful understanding of Africa. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and share your thoughts in the comment box below. Until next time, cheers and have a good one.